so hello guys greetings for the day so welcome back in our next lecture of additive manufacturing in lecture number one we have read about the layout what we are gonna follow for the study of this particular topic and as per that uh, it was having only layout and as per this layout in lecture number two we are supposed to study the steps in additive manufacturing i will also be writing additive manufacturing as plus m sometimes and subtractive manufacturing as minus m or sm so kindly take care of that okay so uh, you are quite familiar with the steps in subtractive manufacturing those where we in subtractive manufacturing we start with a block of raw material this is your block of raw material and then we do some we subtract material from it subtract material this subtraction of material is generally it can be done in either conventional way where you apply some physical force to it like drilling milling cutting boring etc conventional way or non-conventional way whether you can dip it into some chemical which will erode it completely so different conventional non-conventional methodologies you can use and then you will get the product plus some waste if you are able to recycle this waste then it is substantial otherwise it is not and we generally try to go for substantial manufacturing always so <clears throat> today our plan is to know the steps what are involved in the additive manufacturing the steps in additive manufacturing is slightly different from your subtractive manufacturing and the sole reason of that be the state of material what we start from in subtractive manufacturing we started from a block of material which was looking not uh, like it was not very different from your final product but in additive manufacturing we can start from your powder or you can start from filaments or you can start with sheets or you can start with poly like liquid in liquid also not uh, any liquid but photopolymers photopolymers now these photopolymers are a special type of polymer whose state is in liquid but in uh, presence of any uv or any energy source they change into solid so that's why photo means light polymer means polymer so these polymers are sensitive to the lights so right now Today, what the steps what we are going to talk uh, going to talk are concerned with your filaments and liquids because these two are very common and you will also be very easily able to relate to it. Okay, so <clears throat> let's start and let me give you a basic layout of the additive manufacturing steps. What we do. So the let me give you the chart. Yes. So. Additive manufacturing in general follows these six steps. So seven, where it starts with your 3D model creation. This 3D model creation, something is called as STL file formats. What is this? I will discuss. Then it is transferred to your uh, 3D printing machine along with its software. Then 3D machine builds the component. Then we remove the component from it and do some post -pro uh, processing and then finally we are ready with our final product okay so for sake of convenience and better understanding we will club it we will not be dealing too much from this because it is uh, 3d model creation you must be knowing suppose you want to have any manufacturing process in that also you give one engineering drawing but nowadays if you want to use any cnc then cad models are given cad models so these cad models are 3d models so that what it is called 3d model okay sometimes uh, if you are uh, very much interested in reverse engineering reverse engineering mean you already have the object and you want to create something similar object so in such cases what you do you take that object you put that in 3d scanner and this 3d scanner will give you cad model of this object 
and then again you will end up with having a 3d model of it okay but this 3d scanner what is written over here is actually for reverse engineering purpose most commonly for reverse engineering you can also use cmm you can take the object use cmm get the coordinates form the form form the surface i mean and then with that you will get a 3d model again fine now <clears throat> second step is a little bit important this was your first step this one now this is your second step this thing okay now you know that 3d printers create your object in layers okay they form any suppose they will make any object in layers so if they form anything in layers this is your expectation you want the machine to function this way that machine should expectation from machine and machine should print the object in layers but you cannot directly give a 3d model to it it has to be mathematically sliced as these are layers so similarly any 3d model 3d model has to be mathematically sliced and this after mathematic uh, mathematically slicing it has to be given to the software which can understand these things that it has been mathematically sliced and then that software will ask the 3d machine to create a layers okay so this is what is written over here you have a 3d model you slice it over here then you send that sliced information to the software which can understand that these are actually not many uh, pieces of information but they all are about one object only but in sliced and then it will ask the machine to create the similar object in layers layer by layer layer by layer layer by layer and then finally you will have the building or like the product you will have and then you can remove the product okay so this actually is a process of slicing okay so now you understand it so we will read this now a bit in detail because uh, this is something which is new to you and it can be asked okay so now we are in the second step which was written as STL. Now, first thing what you should know, what is this STL? This STL full form is, I will tell you. Okay, wait for it for a while. Uh, this second step was slicing. You should know why it is done. Now, why? You understood this to uh, mathematically slice the not the 3d object but the information in 3d model and store in some file format okay now this file format will be your input to the input to the 3d printer software okay so whatever this file format you will get that will be the input to your 3d printer software and then your machine will start making the object okay so now this slicing can be done in two good ways can be done in two ways in first way you can use the principle of tessellation what is this i will tell you and in second you can do direct slicing of 3d model now if you use the principle of tessellation and then you get whatever you are getting means you will get this thing only is this thing only you will get as your output but whatever you will get that format is called as stl format and from here if you are doing a direct slicing then whatever you will get that is your sli or cl format now this particular method is not very common so we will not be studying it in detail but this we will try to understand and learn more about it okay now what is this tessellation 
Now, this tessellation is actually a mathematical term, which means you will try to map any known surface. Tessellation. So, in tessellation, you will try to map any known surface with another small, small repetitive patterns. I will try to show you an example. Now, see, you must have seen this. Now, earlier, there was a one this big tie, but it can be completely without any gap can be covered up by these repetitive pattern, these repetitive pattern of fish and this red color thing. Okay, red fish, white fish, red fish, white fish. So you can see how complicated this uh, repetitive pattern is. One is fish only, but one is a white color and a red color. But when they are arranged in this fashion, then this entire area is completely sliced into the pieces of these fish. Okay. Similarly, this you see there is one D1, here is one B. Okay, bat and B we say. So this is bat and B. How complex is this? This bat is one shape, this one inside one, and this bat B and plus bird. Okay, the three patterns are actually there. So this bat is inside, this B is a yellow color thing, and then this bird is this thing. So with the completely repetition of these three particular shapes, you can entirely cover any big dimension. Okay, so tessellation means that only to break down any big known surface into standard by any standard shapes. It can be triangle, it can be square, it can be hexagon, it can be very complicated this or this also. Okay, so based on this tessellation technique, we will slice down any known surface. Now, <clears throat> why is this tessellation necessary? So, suppose you have an object. An object is there. I will make this object at random shape. Okay. Now this object is your 3D object. This is having one outer surface. So what you will try to do, you will try to tessellate it outer surface. Outer surface will be tessellated using surface is tessellated. And this tessellation is done with a very elementary shape and that is triangle okay and this tessellation informations are stored in a file yes, this entire information of this outer surface will be broken down into information of small small triangles and then it will be stored in a file so outer surface is tessellated when i say outer surface to be very precise i should say info of outer surface is tessellated and stored in a file format and this file format will be your input to 3dp software okay now your basic and this tessellation thing and this format whatever is called is called stl format okay now what is the full form of this STL? We will start from there. So, your STL stand for, stands for Standard Tessellation Language. Tessellation, because you are using the principle of tessellation. That's why. It is also called as Standard triangulation language because you are using triangles to tessellate and third one is not very common but it is used that is stereo lithography now this st is from st and this l is from there now to be very honest, this stereolithography is a process. Okay. It is not a format, but it is so common and it was so much popular that people started calling this STL as stereolithography only. 
I will give you an example to understand it better. You must be knowing VIP. Now VIP is uh, a company, a brand for briefcases. But what happened that this VIP company was so popular that if someone nowadays is calling, I'm going to buy a VIP, you understand he is not going to buy a VIP brand briefcase, but actually he meant he want to go and buy a briefcase. Similarly, it has happened with Godrej. Means it's a company for uh, Almira or wardrobe, but it is so famous that if someone is telling you I'm going to buy a Godrej, you assume that what he, you know what he's going to go buy. He is not in particular go and buy a, a wardrobe of Godrej company, but he meant Almira. Okay, similarly in here also. So, sim on the similar lines, what has happened that this stereolithography was so famous that now people started take considering it to be that STL means stereolithography format. But all the three things are true. Okay, now what do this stereolithography does? It will store the information. Now, this was the full form only. Its use is to store the info of outer surface and store the info of outer surface in a file okay now what you you you, want, you will get interested what information what info and which file now these are the two questions okay so to understand this, you should know that information, whatever it is storing, are of these small triangles only. Info of triangles. Okay. Now, what info of these triangles? Actually, these triangles are called facets, also known as aka facets. Okay. So, for every facet, there are two set of information which will be required. One will be your vertex coordinates v1, v2, v3 and the normal vector to it. Okay. And second one, which file? So these, there can be two files for it. One is your ASCII file or another one can be your binary file. Okay. So now again, I will brief it up. You had a 3D model. That 3D model was sliced. That slicing can be done in two good ways. One was direct slicing or second one was as per tessellations. Direct slicing, we were not very much interested because it is not very common. But then as per tessellation, whatever you will get, that is uh, your STL format. So STL stands for st standard tessellation language or standard triangula uh, triangulation language or stereolithography. It is not very common, but still it is in use. And then these STL formats store the information of outer surface of any object. This is the object and this outer surface are broken down into triangles in principle. And then uh, these triangle informations, two information that are its vertex coordinate and its normal vector are stored in two different type of files. One is your ASCII files, another one is binary file. This ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Exchange, okay, II. If you have studied anything in computer science, you might be knowing it. If not, then move from today. American Standard Code for Information Interchange, okay. Now, another question what can pop up in your mind is that for tessellation, why these triangles are only used? Why only triangles? Why not square? Or why not uh, hexagon? Like there can be so many shapes. Why not circle? Why triangles were only chosen? The reason was that these information for any object, suppose if you have an object and it is having a sharp corner or a vertex, then these triangles will be very accurate in mapping the information. That's the only reason why these triangles are chosen circles and all they will not have any vertex so circle is out of picture uh, this square you can always break down any square by a center diagonal line it will become two triangle similarly any other things also you can break down into pieces and then you will observe that this 
triangle is the most fundamental shape which will have three edges and three vertex and it will store or have the information which is which will be very accurate to the actual object okay so now we will come back to your uh, briefing again you will brief it up slowly stl okay some info and some file now this file was of two types one was ascii file another one is binary file okay now when to use which one see and this information is same information is same for both the files okay but the thing is the size of there is there has to be some advantage and disadvantage comparison between them otherwise why there will be two different type of file we can always be happily going with one only yes i will that's what i am going to tell see the size of this binary file is very less size is less so we always try to use this we always try to use this but what happens it is having one small problem that suppose sometime uh, you want to do some debugging in the stl format okay now if you want to do debugging in any stl stl file then this ascii codes are very comfortable okay now what do you mean by debugging it's very common thing and you will ask that what can go wrong like we are not changing any we are not uh, with our uh, with our hand we are breaking down the information of outer surface into small small bits and pieces machine is only going to do it so what can go wrong so what can go wrong debugging means what can go wrong what can go wrong so this actually what can go wrong depends on that this stl format has to follow some rules follow some rules all stl format should follow some rules and if these rules are not followed then it will become corrupt and then debugging has to be done okay now i will show you some examples of uh, your stl format first then we will proceed further okay now see now this is a piggy which was planned to be 3d printed and when it was uh, uh, like gone to slicing then you can see how nicely such a complex shape has been tessellated and it has been entirely tessellated by triangles triangles and remember that these small triangles are also called facets and there are two sets of info vertices and normal vector okay now some simple examples are also there with me now see this see this cup to print this cup and by the way you should know that uh, print uh, like doing making this cup full cup by subtracting and casting will be very very difficult because bottom most you cannot do machining okay and such a curved profile it will be very difficult whereas with uh, 3d printing it will be very easy and see now they have very sharp corners here okay here all they are very sharp corners so for these sharp corners only your tessellation in the form of triangles will be of advantage okay so these are some uh, tessellated models what i have shown you okay now come back to our rules rules what all stl format has to follow now there are four rules what every stl file format has to stick to rules for stl formats first rule is your the vertex rule now this vertex rule suggests that two adjacent triangles two adjacent triangles or facets should share at least two 
common vertex. It means that suppose if I have a mm, this sort of outer surface which has been broken down into two pieces. This is triangle number one, this is triangle number two. So there are one, two, three corners for this triangle one and then these are the corners for triangle number two. So now this is a valid STL format or valid tessellation. Okay, STL format or valid tessellation or slicing. Okay, so they these are two adjacent triangles and they have at least two vertex common. So it is a good tessellation. But someone is coming and then breaking it again further like this. I will draw it separately. It will be okay. Hmm. What happened? This was already one tessellated. So someone came. He draw a line like this. Now there are three triangles. One, two, and three. Now this is not a valid tessellation. Why? Now see, one and two are fine. They have two vertex in common. But one and three has only one vertex in common. So this is not a valid tessellation. To do so, we can draw a line like this and then it will become into four pieces, one, two, three, and four. And then all the adjacent triangles will have at least two number of vertex which will be common. Okay, so that is vertex rule. Second rule is your, second rule, R2 I will write, is your orientation rule. Now this orientation rule suggests that all the facets, this orientation rule is for facets. So for all facets, two informations are very necessary, two info, two info are necessary. That you already know, I have told you what were those. That was coordinate of vertex V1, V2 and V3 and the normal. Now, the rule states that, that this normal should always point outward. Always should always point outward of the surface means that suppose if you have a cube and you are making the tessellation on the top surface then this normal vector can be outward and it can be downward also inside the body so inside the body is not the correct tessellation it has to always point outward and second thing is that all the vertices of this triangle should be marked counterclockwise only like this this and this these are the three vertex so it should always be in a counterclockwise so the right hand screw rule will be valid be valid for this normal and it is pointing outwards so this has to be for v1 v2 and v3 so when this vertex is vertex in ccw and normal this is two set of things okay it, it should not be any normal or any vertex but all the vertex should be arranged in the uh, negative uh, sorry counterclockwise direction only and the normal should point outward of the surface okay then why this particular two sets of information are needed you can question like it can come in, uh, in your mind that why two different type of thing if i will say normal vector outside then that will be only sufficient actually these two these are redundant actually to be very honest these are redundant informations but these redundancy is intentionally kept so that suppose if there is some uh, problem happening in the stl format then while debugging it will become very easy okay then the third rule is your all positive octant rule all positive octant rule now this rule states that that all the vertices 
all the vertices has to be shifted in such a way that v1 v2 v3 be shifted such a way shifted such a way that the coordinates be positive and this is actually done to save the size size of the file now just imagine if this vertex was minus 10.53 it is a float type of information and uh, this is your uh, 20.1 and this is your minus 3.57 okay so it can always be shifted if there is a coordinate axis you can shift this in such a way that it's you can shift this coordinate axis in such a way that all of its uh, coordinate become positive and with that what will happen that uh, your information of this negative sign has will not be necessary to store this is true like if you will shift this coordinate axis to in some convenient position such a way that all of these values will change that will change for sure this 10.53 may become 7.81 this will become some value x point y g anything okay this is also becoming something positive only so you see that this negative sign is not necessary now and with this what happens that this negative one sign, to put one negative or positive sign it will take one bit per uh, one bit per facet okay so, and there will be millions of such uh, facets the rhinosaurus what i sh shown you just a couple of minutes back you saw how many facets were there and such one one bit million or billion trillion times the file size will increase so to uh, keep the file size manageable this all positive octant rule was used then fourth and final rule is fourth and final rule was your triangle sorting rule triangle sorting rule now i must say it is not compulsory not a com compulsory rule okay means all other three were very important you cannot skip those where this is optional you can stick to it or you may not stick to it and it helped the slicers to slice 3d model faster okay it helped the help the slicer to slice 3d model quickly okay so these are the four rules so any stl format which is storing information but not following any one to three rules then that will be correct and then that has to be debugged and if you want to debug then ascii binary codes sorry ascii codes are the best option understood so you had your stl some info some file now this file can be your ascii or it can be your binary in this debugging was easy debugging was easy and in this file size was small so that's why we always try to go for this binary but if you are feeling the chances of debugging you have to go through then you will stick to ascii codes and this debugging has to be done when stl formats are not satisfying some rules not satis find the rules and these these rules were four in number and uh, already i have told you that are uh, your vertex rule orientation rule positive octant rule and triangle sorting rule okay now with all these uh, care also sometimes what happens you have to optimize the stl formats optimizing optimizing the stl file stl file for best 3d printing now what do i mean by this i will try to show you by a diagram now you know that see see this in the first one the first one in here 
you can see here the number of facets are less. If I am calling this number of facets as F1, so then the number of facets in here is F1, here is F2 and here is F3. And it can be very easily seen that uh, F3 is greater than F2 is greater than F1. Now you see that if you as you are going to increase the number of facets or the number of triangles, the printing will be more smooth. Here, more information can be captured. Here, even more information can be captured. So, with increasing number of facets, the information is increasing. But with increasing uh, information, the file size will increase and the printing time will take more. The printing time will be very more. Okay. So, you have to always uh, have to optimize optimize between your uh, STL file means number of facets and printing quality. Okay. Now, you can also understand this in a, a easier way, I would say that suppose this is a curve and you are trying to do this. Okay. Now, this is called actually chord length this particular distance is called chord length. If I make more number, like if I make a smaller chord, if I make like this, then this chord length is decreasing, but more number of chord lengths will be there. So printing quality will improve, but time taken will be more. Okay. So depending on the uh, purpose of your 3D printing components and use, you can always optimize which type of STL formatting has to be done. Now, some very common questions which can pop up in your mind, we should take some common questions. In this common questions, the number one is, are all uh, STL files 3D printable? Are all STL files are 3D printable? Answer of this is no means STL files are just a container of information. It contains the info, info of outer surface. It is not a guarantee that it can be 3D printed. These, S, uh, these files can be corrupt also. Understood? So uh, this STL format, if you are having of some object, it is not necessary that you will put that in a machine and it will, you will get a product. It may happen that those STL files be corrupt and it is not be able to get 3D printed. Okay. Second question. Are there any other file formats other than STL? Question is any other types of format other than STL? Now, you, uh, what I have told earlier, I will again repeat that these STL formats are the input to the 3D printers software. Okay. So, in here, what you want to ask me that is there any another file format which this 3D printer software can understand? And answer to this is yes. Yes. There are I guess like around 30 to 35 different types of formats which a 3D printers can understand. Some of the most common ones are, some common ones are, common ones are, one you know is STL, second one is OBJ, third one is PLY, okay, then 3MF, then VRML is also something new coming up. Then AMF, AMF, etc. There are many, but these are some of them what I remember. So I am telling you, these two are just uh, in the nascent stage of development. It is being like slowly, slowly it is being developed. This after STL, if something is very uh, famous, then that is OBJ or object format. PLY and uh, 3MF are also used in our US and in uh, your. European state, the European country, this 3MF is very popular. Ply is also very uh, popular, but not so popular. But STL and OBJ are 
now slowly taking up the market okay now uh, another thing that what are the limitations of stl formats limitations of stl format format file now limitations are there are some limitations one is file size is very big size of file is very large you can understand that your cad file okay cad file is having one object whereas this it is broken down into 1000 bits so 1000 tessellated triangle and then those information are stored in this stl format of file so of course the size will be greater than this cad format okay then second is that they do not contain any other information other than that of triangle means suppose if you want to make a uh, suppose you want to make a square and you want to make this part as red and this part as black it means that this triangle is having to now three sets of information vertices normal vector and color so this color information cannot be stored in stl okay whereas if you or use obj file format then you can store the uh, information of color also for each facets so if you want to make a rubik's cube rubik's cube you must be knowing there are six sides and six different colors and if you want to print that then your dot obj format will be very good instead of your stl format okay now if this is the limitation of stl then what is the uh, advantage of stl like can we entirely eliminate this STL format? So this advantage of STL. Now there are two good advantages. One is universal. As this is the oldest one, as oldest, so almost it is compatible with any 3D printing machine. Compatible with all 3D printing software it's even if they are making today they know that most of the file which are already existing are in this stl format only so the software whatever people are designing even nowadays it will be compatible with your stl and second thing will be its mature ecosystem it means that already it has a very vast directory Suppose if you want to print a mouse, means computer mouse, you can happily go to uh, uh, internet, you can download something and, and it will be generally, mostly in STL format only because it is there existing from very long, very old, means very old by the way when I say then in 1980s only the 3D printer was developed. So from 1980s people are doing work on it. And all the formats, whatever, are uh, mostly available are in this STL format only. So these are its two good advantages. Its disadvantages I have already told you. Okay. So with this, we are finishing our uh, second part of it, which uh, was that. Uh, let us pull back that our chart again. Hmm? okay so see in this now we have done our first part and second part means now you know both of this okay now coming back to this file transfer and machine chatter and this together we will study as i was telling you that this stl format whatever you have made from the cad model is the input to the software for this machine now to print any to print any to print any object, there are hundreds of parameters which are to be taken care of. And those parameters are to be feeded in machine by help of some software. Okay, there are many softwares and I will try to put one example of it. I will just show you what all parameters we generally put because sometime it can be of help. Okay. Okay, let me delete this entire canvas.
Yes. See, now one what I have got means what was there available with me I have just brought in our lab what is there. So this software is your 3D QA. Okay, this particular software what I am talking about, this is BCN 3D QA. This is the software name. And here we are trying to print one small lizard like thing. And these are the parameters. Okay, these are the parameters. Parameters what you are supposed to feed in the machine. Okay, I will just zoom it now this part itself so you can see what are those things okay now see yes see now <clears throat> there is something called as quality now what do you mean by quality in this quality you fix the layer height like suppose one layer and then you are putting another layer so this height is called the layer height okay so in this quality you can put the layer height if you are putting more layer height then you will take less time to print it if you are taking very less layer height then the object what will be printed you can understand it will be one layer second layer layer by layer like that so these layers if it is very very close then the print quality will be very good but it will take more time second one is shell now in shell what we do we put either the wall thickness like suppose if you are trying to make a cylinder uh, like your yeah cylinder you are trying to make so cylinder you are trying to make then this is called wall thickness so such wall thickness you can put in here you can also put the bottom and top thickness because when you are making suppose a closed cylinder then this top layer will also have some thickness and the bottom layer will also have some thickness so those la layer thickness you can fill in the cell thickness then infill it means that suppose when you are making this cylinder then after making the first boundary of it it has to do the infill now in this infill there can be many options I, you can choose shape of infill it can be like this or it can be your uh, hatching there can be uh, waviness there can be many different types of infill and then infill density also you can choose like if you are um, placing this infill very close to each other then very high dense material you will get which will be very strong but it will take more time to print okay similarly you can keep it coarse also then it will take uh, less time of course but the density will not be so good okay so depending on infill pattern and in infill uh, density generally 20 percent is the standard what we use it is good also okay infill density is 20 percent then material what type of material are you using suppose you are using abs or you are using uh, pbs these are different material i will tell you about it so uh, these materials will have different uh, melting temperature okay so depending on this material type the temperature of the nozzle will be set now speed there are two speed one when the printer nozzle will come and uh, like uh, print it so that is called your printing speed whereas when it is not printing and only nozzle is moving then that is called as your travel speed similarly support now support means that uh, suppose okay i will drop this entirely and then i will tell you so suppose you want to make a uh, stick figure like this you want to print this okay this is your platform now when you will try to make this hand now you see your printer will come here it will make layer 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 layer, layer. it will make something like this here also it will make some layer it will go here till here no problem but when it will try to suspend this in air then the problem will happen because it cannot be directly made in air so what will happen you will need to create some support that support while creating support what 3d printer will do it will come it will make this leg it will also make one support like this then it will come it will make a support so this support layer will be made and when it will come at this height 
then your hand can be supported on this support layer. Okay, so like it will be made or this will also be constructed by 3D printer. So this support, this is called support. This support is to support any overhanging things. Okay, now this support setting also it can be you can place the support anywhere or it can you can place the support uh, at the internal also. I will just show you an example of that also. I might be having some photographs of it because once if you see you will always remember otherwise you might the chances of forgetting will be there yes now see now this t type of this was uh, we people were trying to make so you see this is a, a t junction so now this is support okay this part is the support this is support and this is support with the option of support any uh, support your touching building this is build plate build plate so when in this support if you can see if you are putting your build like support at your build plate then only from build plate it will come up to the first layer and then slowly slowly it will make all this part but if you are putting an option in your uh, this as support as support anywhere then it means it can be outside also and then the support will come inside the object also and this support will be used in the best possible way in which this part can be manufactured okay so your support anywhere option will take care of these things fine then what else and similarly there are many other options like there is option of your build plate adhesion dual extruders like instead of one extruder two extruders can also be used and many other things okay so that is called as machine setup stage so file stl file will be transferred to the machine software and machine software you can put machine setup and then you can start building okay now you come to the fifth fifth point in that big chart that snaky chart was there in that fifth point is your build up building now before building i would like to tell you that there are two most common methods of building most common methods of building what are those one is uh, fdm fusion deposition method and second one is your vac polymerization In FDM, what happens? I will show you with the help of diagram. But before that, I will write. In FDM, you use uh, filler wires. Filler wires. And in VAT polymerization, you use liquid, which can be solidified photopolymers. Photopolymers means these polymer liquids can be solidified in presence of any uv light or uv curing is done then it will become solid okay so now the example of fdm i will show you some photographs of it so that you can remember okay now see this is the example of fdm now in this what happens that <coughs> this is called extrusion oil extrusion nozzle this part this is the extrusion nozzle and uh, this two are the polymers polymer wire spool okay now these polymer can be your abs or it can be your pb pbs yes abs and pbs now this ABS stands for your acrylonitrile butadiene styrene and PBS is polybutadiene succinate. Okay, so this full form I will write down, you can remember it. But for now, you should know that see, this is called extruder. Through this extruder, these two wires are being passed. There will be one heating element inside. That heating element will heat this polymer. These are thermosets, by the way. Thermosets. 
we will come in i will tell you in detail what is thermoset and all so this thermoset the polymer will pass through this heater it will heat and take the temperature of this thermoset polymer to a such a temperature that it will get into viscoelastic state and then they will be extruded and then this object will be formed now you can see there are two different color this is one and this is two actually this two is your support okay now the supports can be your uh, soluble non-soluble that also i will tell you wait okay so these uh, are supports this is your object and after making this object this object is removed the supports are removed and then you will have the final 3d object so this entire thing is your uh, your fdm fdm fusion deposit fdm fdm fusion deposition method okay it is being fused means it is being taken to viscoelastic state then they are being deposited by extrusion and then method is method okay then these are pinch rollers by the way we say they drive the this feed into this nozzle okay heating is done over here only so and yes uh, see this is the nozzle nozzle area i suppose a so when this layers will be made when these layers will be made one over the another then these layers cross section will also be similar to this uh, nozzle cross section if this nozzle is circular then these will be made a circular cylindrical like of layout will be there if this is square then a square type of lay will be there okay these are also called as roads roads in 3d okay means this is the technical term roads so we, will, we are right now not very interested in it. okay then the second method is your uh your this thing this is called as vat polymerization first you understand this then i will bring it here, this second one so in vat polymerization what happens that this is your vat this particular thing is called vat and inside this vat this is photopolymer photo polymer okay so this photo polymer is a type of liquid of polymer which is when exposed by uv light or laser it will solidify this is the platform initially this platform was just here and then this laser scanned this big area so this was solidified and then this platform sunk by a distance and then another layer was formed then again it sunk down further by a distance then layer by layer like this this entire thing was made okay now what is the use of this is called wiper or doctor's blade it is also called a zypher blade z-e-p-h-y-e-r but that will, i will tell you what is this later okay right now you just see that this is called your uh, photopolymerization or your uh, yes this is your uh, vat polymerization method okay now you must see in this that this printing is also called as top down printing means this object is being formed layer by layer and it is being from top down okay whereas this is also very similar to it only the another one which i have shown you this one this is also very similar to it but here the difference is that your hair laser was on top hair laser is in bottom okay so laser is in top it is in bottom and this build platform is going up so initially build platform was here and then every layer uh, by this uv light the programming of this uv light it was made this is the object which is being formed so this is called your bottom up printing okay it's because see this uh, platform is going up and it is in upside down method it is getting printed so uh, the printing methods are of two types like your 3d printing are of two types one is your fdm which is fusion deposition method another one is your vac polymerization okay in vat polymerization your input was your photopolymers 
and in this also there were two approaches one was top down printing and another one is bottom up printing you remember this printing word because this entire additive manufacturing is called bottoms up manufacturing whereas these two are top down printing and bottom up printing in in this your in this was your input material whereas in this fdm your input material are your uh, wires wires of polymer and generally these polymer are either abs or pbs your abs stands for acrylo ac y ac r y l o acrylo nitrile butadiene butadiene styrene okay and this pbs is your polybutadiene poly buta butylene sakine i hope the spellings are correct you please have a check also okay so abs and pbs and here only i will tell with abs with your abs whenever we use abs as our building material then for the support material and all we use hips and yes they don't lie <laughs> sorry for the idiotic joke but this hip stands for high impact high impact polystyrene polystyrene yes high impact polystyrene ps is for polystyrene okay so these things are used as support material and by the way you should also know this that the uh, diagram what i showed you for your uh, this uh, method in your this thing fdm just above what the, it has shown i have shown that there is one extruder in extruder there are two input wires two filaments were going in so you can these are dual extruders actually one wire you can use as construction material to construct the material means solid whereas sub, second one you can use for support why because this material can be very costly whereas for supporting anyway you have to take it out and throw it so why to use very costly things use a cheaper thing like whenever this abs plastics are used that for abs plastic we use support material as hips why because this hips are soluble in your um, a chemical which is support material cause soluble in delimonene so delimonene is actually a solution so suppose you are making some part okay and in that part there are some support materials here and there so after processing this entire object directly put in delimonene and this support material will get dissolved and you will be left with the abs plastic mold so that's why we use this hips with abs okay this is something to remember and yes with pbs we use another type of support material i'll tell you that also with pbs we use pva pva as support material this uh, pva stands for uh, polyvinyl alcohol poly v a n y n alcohol and this is soluble in water so so easy make the product put in water your support structure will go okay 
and by the way this this uh, many people get confused with, between this pva and this pvac please don't get confused they both are two different items this is a polyvinyl acetate and this is polyvinyl alcohol so if in options sometimes if it is coming don't mark this c this is entirely wrong please take a note of this it happens many times it is pva not pvac not okay fine so uh, with this you can understand different printing methods okay then come back to our sixth stage which is your part removal and post processing S six and seven step number six and seven which are part removal and post processing now once your uh, your 3d component has been printed you are free to take it out and then do the some of the post processing things example i will show you now see here this 3d printing thing this is actually well uh, 3d printing of stamp okay you put some signature and then you put one stamp so this is that stamp only so once you are 3d printing it it's okay very good and then this is the support okay you take it out this entire material then take this out the base material it is waste throw this and this is your object okay so this is part removal now come back to post processing now post processing is also very important why because not only in terms of aesthetics but it is uh, very good i will show you see some examples i am showing you now this is my friend owl and earlier it was this is non post process this is also an example actually this example is for supports which i wanted to show you yeah see this is this was our uh, without post processing see each layer of 3d printing it is visible if you will see closely you can see here then here also see that it has been formed in layers that is very much evident in this but once if you are doing post processing it is actually polishing so after polishing it will look very shiny the luster will increase and this item will become very good okay so this is with post processing okay similarly in here you see th this is also just the part coming out of the 3d printing machine these are all support materials these all are the support materials these all are support material and this was made from your pva polyvinyl alcohol which was soluble in water we put directly in water so this all supporter material will go and it will look like this and this is your final mathematical uh, object which was of interest okay so with this we have finished all other uh, methods like method as in all the steps whatever are needed that we have done again let me put the first picture again so you can very well understand yeah see here first we started with our 3d printing model 3d printing model we started with then we i we discussed in detail what is stl file everything in detail then all the software and the 3d printing settings what all can be done and part build up there was two fdm and your polyvinyl uh, sorry wet polymerization two methods today i have shown you all others method will come subsequently then part removal and post processing now i have to tell you list of post processing what can be done okay so this list of post processing will be uh, you will have an idea what all can be the post processing and this post processing is very important also because many times what happen that the price of 3d printing is less than the post processing and it's very strange in 3d printing the post processing is a very costly affair and what all can be done in this post processing let me just list it down okay uh, now your one can be your directly uh, support removal okay support removal the support removal can be of two types either it is soluble like just i have told you with pv and abs what are, are the soluble things 
one was soluble in delimonene, another was soluble in water, or it is non soluble sometime, it is non soluble. If it is non soluble, then you will use any of the uh, tools, tools like uh, tools like clipper, knife, etc., and you will cut away this support material. Okay. As simple as that. There is no such rocket science behind this. Second post processing, what you can do is acetone smoothening. Acetone smoothening. When you make any ABS part, ABS, any part with ABS material, then what we do, you we take that part and we put that in a closed container and then we give the acet acetone fumes. With this acetone fumes, this ABS part will become very shiny. Means this will just take away the first layer. It is very, it, it dissolves. Actually, ABS dissolves in acetone. So the top layer of this part will dissolve in this acetone vapors and the luster will increase and the grain markings, what was visible, will go. Okay. Then third one can be your uh, priming and painting. You can do priming and painting. Priming is putting the first layer on which paint can stick. So that you can do. Okay. You you spray the prime on that object and then you color it with as per your uh, wish. Then hydro dripping is another thing. Hydro dripping. Now hydro dripping, you might not be knowing what happens. There is a container. In that container, there are some liquids. In this liquid, we spray paint. So this paint stays on this water only and then we dip the part. So this paint sticks on the part. On YouTube, you can see hydro dipping. It's a very good looking uh, process and you will be very happy to see some examples. Okay. Many helmets and all are being customized by this hydro dripping. Whatever patterns you want, you can get in by that hydro dripping. If you want a camouflage pattern on your ha helmet, then this hydro dripping will be very good process. Then another process can be sanding. You can sand away the first top layer, then polishing, electroplating, gluing, welding, etc. There are so many post-processing methods, which I will not be discussing in so much detail that you can understand. Okay. So with this, we finish all our steps in AM process. Now, a very important topic is part build up time. Part build up time. Now, part build up time is actually from here numericals can come. Okay. Now, part build up time is like suppose if there is a cylinder what you want to make. Okay. And I will give you some data and then I will ask you how much time will it take to make, make the cylinder. Suppose the cylinder height is H. Hmm. And uh, if you see a top view of this. Then it will be a circle and 3D printer head will come and it will start printing. Okay. And it will uh, like print like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this entire first layer it will print. Then first layer will be done. This is your first layer. Then second layer, then third layer, then fourth layer and so on and so forth. Okay. So for this entire height by number of layers, it will print the entire salt. Okay. So now the question can come, how much time can it take? So your build up time, T build up is equal to summation of time taken for each layer. Okay. And time taken for all layers, each layer actually is equal to area. This is the area actually divided by velocity of printing into area plus time delay. Now, what do I mean by this? It will be slowly cleared by a question only. Okay. So this you just noted down that this is time at layer and this layers, number of layers, suppose this is uh, n layers n layers is one layer two layer three layer dot dot n layer from this is one to n 
So if you will take the summation for each layer, then you will get the total time to build up this object. Now let us take one uh, numerical on this. So it will be easy for us to understand. So the question states that that a prototype of a tube with square cross section is to be fabricated. A square cross section has to be fabricated. And this is a tube actually. So it has to be something like this. Uh, OK. A prototype with a square cross section is to be fabricated using stereolithography. The outside dimension of square is 100 mm. This is your 100 mm. And inside is your 90 mm. Okay. So this inside thing is 90 mm. This is the cross section of your tube. Okay, and then what it is saying that wall thickness is 5 mm. Okay, the height of tube is 80 mm. Means this is your 80 mm. Layer thickness is 0.1 mm. Means every layer, layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, this distance is your 0.1 mm. The diameter of laser beam spot size is 0.25. And the beam is moved across the surface of polymer at a speed of means the laser what is falling on that back polymer it is having a cross section area small a of your 0.25 mm by the way it is not area this is diameter only fine diameter diameter is 0.25 mm and then this is moving with a velocity of 500 mm per second now it is asking to estimate the time required to build the part if 10 seconds are lost each layer means t delay is 10 seconds now you can very easily understand it by the logic that this entire time that total time will be equal to summation of time made per layer and from one to number of layers okay now to find the number of layers you have to come here now this is 80 mm and every time it is making 0.1 mm so number of layer is how much 80 by 0.1 is equal to 800 layers So this is pretty neat that you have to sum it for 1 to 800 and time per layer. Okay. And this time per layer, if it is constant, then this will directly become 800 into time plus layer. Time plus layer, how you will get? So this is your area, what is being printed. So this is your 100 square minus 90 square. This is area, shaded area, okay, divided by velocity, which is 500 into this diameter, 0.25 plus delay, which is 10 per second. And then you just have to multiply this entirely with 800. You will end up getting some 5 point something hours, okay, and that will be your answer, okay. So, by this question, we will be finishing today's lecture. And then now we will meet in our third lecture where we will compare the 3D printing or the additive manufacturing and our subtractive manufacturing with each other. Now, before that, at last, I just want to tell what all can be twists, what can be made. So, this time of entire part is equal to summation from 1 to n number of layer number of layer and time plus layer and this time plus layer 
uh, you have seen that area by uh, some diameter into velocity plus time of delay. Now, see, today I have only told you about two different types of 3D printing. One was your VAT polymerization, VAT polymerization, and second one was your uh, FDM, fusion deposit model. Okay. So in VAT polymerization, you use laser. So this D in this will be equal to focal spot. Okay. And your TD is time delay. It is same. Whereas in FDM, we use wires. So this D will be dia of wire or dia of nozzle. If both are given, if any one of them is given, use that. But if both are given, the dia of wire is also given and dia of nozzle is also given, then you will choose dia of nozzle. Because suppose this is your nozzle and in this there is some input of wire but at the end suppose if nozzle dia is small a this is capital a material is coming out from this only so what you have to do you have to take the dia of nozzle always but if it is not given dia of wire is given use that okay velocity will be your printing only area will be what is being printed and this td will be time delay sometimes what can happen this uh, velocity they can give you as now there are two different types of velocity what I have discussed while put telling you the parameters. So this velocity are two types. One is your printing velocity. And your second type is your travel speed, travel speed or travel velocity. Travel speed also they say sometimes travel velocity they will say I will write speed. Okay. So you know that when the it is being printed that is called printing velocity but sometime what happened uh, suppose this is the square thing what has to be printed so your nozzle will start from here it will print from here to here then it will come back back to here and then again it will print it will not print in this coming thing okay so that is called travel speed so sometimes they will give you both printing velocity and travel speed so in that you don't get confused Similarly, you just calculate your printing time. In this, there is no printing happening. So this will be the delay time. Okay. Means from here to here, printing is happening. But from here to here, it is just coming without printing. So this is a sort of delay. The second layer is happening from here to here. Okay. So whatever be in question it is given, this is simple arithmetic what you can understand. Kindly adjust and then there will be no complexity in solving the numerical. So with this, I would close my today's lecture. Thank you for listening me out. And please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you. Kadil Kabuta signing off. Jain.